Hello everyone, this is Josh with True Laser Cutting. In the video today we will be going through the workflow of how to set up glassware on the TLC rotary. This will include finding an image to engrave on the glassware, prepping the glassware inside of your K40 laser, and cleaning the glassware after etching. The first thing we're going to need to do is find something to engrave. If you have an SVG or a DXF file, it's very easy to get started engraving. But oftentimes you're given a JPEG or a PNG file from friends or clients that will need to be converted to a vector line so that it will have a cleaner engraving. For my example, I'm going to open up Google and find a generic logo for our example. To get this back into Lightburn, I don't have to save the image. I can simply right click and copy the image. Then I can go back into Lightburn, right click and paste it in. If we zoom in on the image, we can see that it's got all these pixels. If we try and engrave it how it is now, it will work, but it will be sort of fuzzy on all the edges as it tries to compensate for the power of these individual pixels being lighter color. What we will do is select the image, and you can either go up to the tools bar and click trace image, or hit alt T to open the trace image tool. The purple line indicates what will be output from the trace image tool. If you zoom in, you can see that on the text some of it has been rounded out a little bit, and I've found that if you bring the threshold up, it will typically snap it a little bit better into place. Even though this isn't perfect, I've found that most of the time, most people will not be able to tell the difference between genuine text and something that's been traced. Obviously an SVG file would be the best, but recreating all this by hand would be very difficult. So once you're happy with it, you can click OK. And at this point, it has put your new trace behind the original image. So simply grab it and move it off to the side. Since we're not going to be actually engraving with the original image, I'm going to delete it to clean up a little bit of space. Next thing we need to do is get this ready for the piece of uh, glassware that we're going to be engraving on. Now obviously this is too big, so we'll want to resize it for something that will fit onto our piece of glass. The, the glass that I'm going to be using is about 74 millimeters in diameter. So if I multiply that by 3, that gives me roughly 220 millimeters. And I typically, when doing something like this, want it to be less than halfway across. So uh, halfway around the glass is about 110 millimeters, so I'll make it smaller than that. So let's go with something about 70 millimeters, and it will be a lot easier for us to engrave on there. We also need to remember that the rotary inside of the K40 is oriented sideways. So when the glass is turning, it'll be rotating along the Y axis here. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so that this will be near the top of the glass and this will be the bottom of the glass. If you happen to have oriented your glassware differently, just use 270 millimeters to rotate it around the correct direction. Next we will be getting the glass ready to go into your laser cutter and setting it up on the rotary. So this is a piece of glass that I'm going to be using for our example here. Now, you can engrave directly onto the glass but I've found that it actually leaves a, a worse finish and it sometimes will flake off. Uh, it can even cause little glass fibers that will flake off and you can feel on your hands even after washing it a couple of times. So typically what I like to do is do is use vinyl transfer tape. Uh, this stuff is pretty cheap and even after a year I still have plenty left. So since I don't need it this wide I'm simply just going to pick off a piece like this and put it onto, onto my piece of glass. Now, I don't want to put it all the way up to the edge because there's the drive wheel and we don't want it to accidentally get caught, caught on it. We also don't want it all the way at the bottom either, but I can rip that off in a second. So I typically put a spine down right in the middle there and then I'll just rub this in trying to make sure that there's no bubbles or creases which is a little bit difficult when you realize that the glass is the glassware is never perfectly flat but if you can get pretty close usually there's no sort of artifacts from from the engraving process once i get one side done i'll move on to the next work it across 
And once I got that on, I'll simply come over here and rip off the bottom. I've left quite a bit on here, but it'll, we'll only be engraving right about in this area here. Once we've prepared the glass, the next thing we need to do is get it inside of the K40 laser cutter. So I've already disabled our Y-axis, unplugged it, and plugged in the rotary. But to get the glass ready for engraving, we have to make sure that it's uh, straight across this way, and it needs to be level so that it's uh, in the focal distance uh, from our nozzle the whole time. So there's a few different functions on the rotary to get this set up. We have the slide, which we can adjust our, our length of the glass. And we also have this riser that can be lifted up and down for adjusting the back of the glass. Typically when I start, uh, I'll decide about how high the glass needs to be off the bottom. For some beer steins that are 85 millimeters across, it needs to be almost all the way to the bottom of the bed. So I'll move this idler out and it'll allow the bottom of the glass to drop a little bit farther down. Uh, at that point, I'll bring over my, my slide here and I'll readjust these wheels so that they're fairly lined up with the idler and where it will be contacting the drive wheel here. At that point, uh, I can bring in my glass, lift up my idler here, and get it sort of in position while I get the length in. So I can tell that this isn't uh, very level here, but I've already got this sort of lined up, and I know it's approximately the height that I'm gonna need it, at least on this side. So if I bring over my nozzle right over the top, and I use my little indexing card here, I can see that this side is within uh, the focal distance that I want. But when I bring it over here, there's a big gap. So what I'll do is I will lift it up on this slide and check again. Close, but not quite right. I'll lift that a little bit more, or a lot more. A little too high. This doesn't need to be perfectly level on both sides, at least as far as the front and the back, uh, but it helps to have them fairly close. Oops. All right, that's pretty good right there. So I'm gonna tighten up the length here, making sure that there's a little bit of a gap between the back of the glass uh, and the the bar here. That'll help prevent it from accidentally getting stuck during our engraving. I also want to hold the lift while I tighten up the two ends here and we won't have to worry about the glass falling down later. The next important thing to remember is when turning on the machine it's going to attempt to home the X and Y axis. But we have the Y axis disconnected so I'm going to have to manually hit the homing switch twice at least for most configurations, uh, because otherwise it won't realize that it'll never get there and you'll find that your glass piece will just rotate continuously. So making sure that we are out of the way of the x-axis trying to home, I'm going to turn on the machine and hit the home switch twice. Once and you can see it's rotating again. Hit that a second time. And now the machine is homed and, and you're ready to go. Once you have the rotary set up in your machine, we have to make sure that all of the settings are correct in Lightburn. For my testing, I've found that the maximum power I can safely run my K40 at is at 75% power. I've also found that for engraving on glass, 75 millimeters per second at this maximum power of 75% is uh, uh, comes out with good results. Uh, you'll also notice that my line interval is at 0 0.07 millimeters. This allows for some good detail without taking too long. Uh, keep in mind that if you do change this line interval, uh, that is, you'll also have to change your power settings. Uh, if you make it too small, 
it will cause it to put too much heat into one spot and crack the glass. If your machine allows for it, make sure that you have Enable Rotary turned on. Otherwise, you'll have to go up into Edit and Machine Settings to manually change the steps per millimeter so that you can get the right number for your rear rotary. You should also change your job origin to one of these bottom three positions since uh, a fiddling action will start from the bottom and work its way to the top. To verify this, open your preview and make sure that all of the items will be engraved at the same time. This will make sure that everything's lined up uh, perfectly when it engraves. The last thing we want to do is open up the move tab and put the, the laser set to uh, the maximum on its Y and whatever X position you find is good on your, your glass wire. Once it's in the uh, farthest Y position, we can uh, go ahead and start the job. All right, uh, it's done engraving. This is what we're left with. And all we have to do now is clean up the last little bit of soot out of there and pull off all of our tape. So typically what I'll do is I'll just bring this over to the sink and I like to use simple green and hot water but you can do it, you could just send this through the dishwasher or wash it with typical dish soap as well. So this is what it looks like after uh, washing and drying. Uh, you can see it's got a nice texture without any uh, cracking, so uh, these are the sort of results that you can expect on a regular basis once you've got your uh, power settings dialed in. Um, might change up a little bit depending on the degradation of your laser and whatnot, but you'll find what you like pretty quickly. And uh, just a reminder that uh, this kit is for sale on eBay and Etsy. Uh, check out the description below uh, and it'll send you over there. Alright, thanks and have a good one.